Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokémon White version! Last time, we explored Route 3! We had a rival battle, we had a Team Plasma battle, we explored a cave, and... Oh yeah, we caught ourselves our second permanent team member! Oh. A rather adorable zebra cub, or zebra filly, zebra pony... I don't actually know what you would call that. Um, somebody will probably correct me on it, but regardless, we caught ourselves a little zebra! Who should definitely be a little bit less modest about themselves when they have stat buffs that darn good. Oh, I love it. Ah, oh, you're so, so nice. I'm happy I got the nature that I did in the end. You're gonna be attacking using Shockwave, which, by the way, I should probably switch into the front attack there, so I'm not having to scroll down to it every time. But regardless, I'm very happy that we got you, and I think we're gonna have many great battles to come. This time, we're gonna be exploring the rest of Route 3 and seeing all the things that we didn't see after we got sidetracked with story progress if that makes any sense, kind of contradictory. Uh, little pups, they have a few items for us, so we'll take a repel, and then we'll take a potion as we get started here. And starting off, I wanna go backwards a little bit, uh, up these steps, as right here we have something rather important. I can ever read it. Pokemon Daycare, we take care of your precious Pokemon. I still don't know why in old games you could read signs from the side, but someone thought like, you know, it would make a lot more sense if you could only read them from the front. Let's make things less convenient for people. Never understood why so many games do that. Sometimes they let us play with Pokemon. Aw, you can run around in circles forever and ever with them in your own little form of purgatory. When I picked up the Pokemon I left in the daycare, I, it had learned different moves than it knew when I left it there. Pokemon can only learn four moves, so you have to be careful. Yeah, Pokemon can automatically overwrite their moves. When you leave them in the daycare, um, they'll be out of your group for a little while. They'll be out of your group until you come pick them up, and they gain one experience point per step walked, and for every level that they grow, you pay 100 more Poke Dollars to withdraw them. You have a base fee of 100 just for leaving them there in the first place to get them back. I think we're gonna leave Panseer here for a while. We're not using him, and I've been wanting to be better to him, and since he's not gonna be on the team, we're gonna have him come back to us a stronger monkey. Besides, this way I don't have to use them in battle. <laughs> so, um, I guess on the note of the elemental monkeys, they've always been special to me. I get why some people don't like them, definitely, and my story's not even really about these monkeys themselves. It's more that they're based on the, um, the three monkeys that are see no evil, hear no evil, and, uh, speak no evil. There was one time that I was out with a friend just at, like, some trinket store, and they had those three monkeys, but next to them, there was a fourth monkey. I've never seen this before anywhere else, but it had its hands covering its crotch. My friend took one look at that, and they were like, so what's that, do no evil? <laughs> I just, it, I thought that was so good, and just, any time that I see those wise three monkeys in any iteration, including the elemental monkeys, I can never unhear that, and now I've cursed you as well. But, uh, here we are. Blitzel had a great first battle, but not so good of a second battle, and I think it's time for a training montage. On top of that, I did promise we'd go over the Wellspring encounters, uh, Wellspring cave encounters in the near future, and thus we shall. It knits together pretty nicely, don't you think? I feel invincible because I am surrounded by the smiles of children and Pokemon. I know, right? Just being a force for positivity is great. Just being surrounded by smiles, oh, it's so empowering, I love it. Anyway, now we're battling Nursery Aid Autumn and presumably a few other people too. Let's get to the encounters in Wellspring Cave. Soon enough, you will acquire a strong dislike for the buffed sturdy ability and how often Rog and Rolla loves to show its ugly ear with it because that's what its face is, it's just an ear. Its common weaknesses to grass and water aren't as bad as they are here as they are with most other rock type tanks because it is pure rock type and not part ground giving it a quad weakness. This is strictly a physical tank. Ridiculously slow, but ridiculously good defense and attack. It only has rock blast for a physical rock type move until level 30 when it gets rock slide, so be wary of that. There's far more opportunities to raise this family later, so if it sounds interesting but tough to use for right now, just wait on it. There's no rush whatsoever. Just make sure that you can trade to evolve it even after Nintendo Wi-Fi connection is shut down, or else its fully evolved stats are going to look like this instead. Oh, and uh, de-quip its Everstone if it has one. I might have just saved your life. Second, we have Woobat. Woo, this thing is fast. Even as an unevolved Pokemon, it is one of the fastest Pokemon possible with our measly one badge. It's fast, but it's not really a sweeper per se. 
The name of the game with Wubat is instead going first, inflicting confusion, attraction, or flinches, making it so that your opponent has to roll the dice to be able to even move. It even has a signature move at level 15 called Heart Stamp that works with this. Heart Stamp is not a bad move by any means, but I'd say you're better off replacing it with Air Slash once you get the chance to learn it. It's yet another unorthodox and very unique Pokemon here, so points for originality. Psychic Flying is also an awkward type for a lot of Pokemon to deal with, so it can definitely hold its own. It's not perfect, but hey, that's miles better than the mountains of crap that filled the last eight areas or so. And all the way from Mother 3, it's Drillbur! Okay, this one's a bit quirky. It's tough. It's hard hitting. It's able to take damage well, and it learns Earthquake leveling up, Rock Slide leveling up, Swords Dance leveling up. Pretty decent TM compatibility as well. Sand Rush for its ability makes it one of the best Pokemon to use Sandstorm with out there. Has an amazing defensive type of Steel Ground after it evolves. It resists many common types, and even makes it a sweeper that is immune to both paralysis and poison. It's hard to stop. It's almost unfair how good Drillbur is. It can even get Earthquake early by just waiting two extra levels to evolve. I'd recommend that you do that. Heck, it even has an uncommon move called Drill Run that might be worth considering just for fun. It's a weaker, slightly less accurate Earthquake that has a high critical hit chance. There is no doubt that Drillbur is one of the absolute best options out there. It's amazing in so many ways. But I did say that it was quirky. And really, that just comes down to saying that its moves if caught in Wellspring Cave aren't that strong and don't get better for a bit, but if you don't want to deal with that, there's plenty more opportunities to catch it later. Seriously, it's a great Pokemon, and you might not even have to deal with that downside if you wait on it a little bit. And should you need to heal, and you don't want to walk the extra 10 seconds into town, you can heal inside of this building, which is awfully nice. Seriously, guys are just all little boys. <laughs> it's so charming to think of, like, kids doing that. Happened to the daughter of the couple running the Pokemon daycare next door. I know, it's sweet, isn't it? Parents and daughter all bringing up youngsters for a living. Helping Pokemon and people grow up healthy is a wonderful thing. Aw, oh, how optimistic of you. Yeah, yeah! And what do you say? Uh, uh, excuse me, I wish to... Roar! I'll run. Are you gonna chase me? You run. Am I gonna chase you? Change your perspective. And the reality changes. Philosophical little children hammering morals down your throat. Yes, I'm familiar with double battles. You do have a gym badge after all. You're well aware that double battles are Pokemon battles where each side uses two Pokemon. I just wanted to come in here and show that really quick. Now, um, before we move on through the merry way that is Route 3, there is one trainer that I never battled, and I want to do that really quick. Uh, take this Hyper Beam! Uh, certainly hope you're not the equivalent of that one rich boy that uses full restores at the very beginning, but uh, Blitzel is very close to leveling up, so I want to do this really quick. And I got nerfed by getting paralyzed right there. Yeah, electric types are not immune to paralysis here, so... The fact that Blitzel can have cherry berries on it in the wild might actually be a little bit helpful to you with Lick being able to paralyze you. Here we go. And it was more power- oh, maybe I'll never know because that was a critical hit, but I grew to level 13 regardless. Whoops. Hyper Beam? Oh, my Pokemon can't really use it yet. I don't know very much about Pokemon, so I just want to use really cool moves. Be really cute if he was like calling that out in battle and wondering why it wouldn't work. Uh, can't go down the slide, but I can walk down and walk up it and get yelled at by the teacher because that's what they exist for. Uh, for now, though, I think we're gonna go have an adventure in the sandbox and find an Ultra Ball. I like that detail a lot. Just having a really rare hidden item in a children's sandbox because things always get lost in those places. It's just kind of what they exist to do. I'm gonna go, well, actually, no, I don't need to go back and heal. What am I saying? I just showed that you can heal right here in this building. <laughs> uh, my memory failing me. I'm getting old. <laughs> now, um, as for the daycare next door, I'm sure some people have brought up, you know, hey, what about breeding? You know, why haven't you talked about breeding? This daycare, try as you might, they will not let you leave two Pokemon there, at least not yet. So breeding is not a thing, and I think this will be a good time to mention that in addition to dream abilities not being a part of my decision making when giving Pokemon bios, I'm also not taking breeding into account because we can't do it, and if a Pokemon would be made better by breeding, that's just straight up not being even considered for that. Your Pokemon look quite good. 
Do you show me even tra would you show me even training them? I've been training them an awful lot, if only because I was having some bad luck in catching myself another team member. Uh, Pokemon breeder Adele. Ad, Ad, Adele -aid? It sounds like the singer Adele combined with lemonade a, a little bit. I'm just making fun of everyone's names here, man. Before too long, I am not going to have any people liking me left because I'm going to have made fun of all their names and I'm a fine one to talk with my name being Emil and everyone always mispronouncing it Emily all the time. Please, let your precious Pokemon have this. For beating Pokemon breeders in battle, they will often give you at least some kind of berry. Kinda nice, considering especially that they usually have pretty large teams of Pokemon. She only had three, but sometimes Pokemon breeders will have even more than that, and they're usually pretty weak, so they just kind of exist to consume your time. It's kind of ironic that you're on a route with a daycare that can't even have breeding in it, though, but you get a repel for fighting her, as well as that orange berry, so it's definitely worth your time. And as we go onward, we have another trainer battle. Now I get to show off everything I learned in the trainer school. Well, I got news for you, buddy. I went to that same trainer school for a whole day. And you have a blitzel yourself. This is kind of fun. Oh, um. I would say, wow, we're the same level. I would say please use your electric attacks on me so that I get buffed, but I wouldn't be able to actually use those buffs at all, so. We're probably just going to be hammering quick attacks and charges at one another over and over again. And that's the way I likes it, damn it! I like having the same species and same levels on both sides just to see who's better. Um, but I, I guess actually uh, I've been wanting to mention Blitzel's Pokedex entry and what a more perfect opportunity. In Black version, its Pokedex entry says that they flash their mains at each other to communicate over great distances, kind of like Morse code. and. Not only is that a very cool way for electric Pokemon to communicate, but it's actually reflected in their animation, so they really do do that. I mean, I guess they were telling each other how much they don't like each other's faces right there this whole time, but... <laughs> Narrowly came out on top. I knew you were better, Blitzo, with your superior nature and all that. I see an item I want, and I see an Audino that I want. Whoa! That was worth all the time that it took! And I'm learning Thunder Wave! Wow, okay. That's very appreciated. One of the absolute best moves in the game. It is a move that just paralyzes, 100% accurate. You bet I want to learn that. I wouldn't use Tail Whip to make my Quick Attack do more damage. That's the least valuable move in my moveset, hands down. So of course I want that. Gonna make catching Pokemon a lot easier. I just love having a Pokemon with Thunder Wave on my team. I know that m things like Sleep and Frozen Status make it even easier to catch Pokemon than uh, par than uh, Paralysis does, but Paralysis is just so much more reliable and easier to inflict that I greatly prefer it. It also doesn't wear off after a few turns, so all around I think it is the better one for catching Pokemon long term. Hello, p -Dove. Guess what? You're going to have a really rotten day right about now. Yes, you are. <laughs> My apologies. The carnage was much too graphic for you to watch. I did not want to cause anybody to lose their lunch if they happen to be enjoying a nice pizza with this or something like that. Hello, Charon. Let me guess. Blair, stop. Man, you love opening every sentence like that like it's a dang soap opera. The dark tall, the dark tall grass over there. Every now and again, two Pokemon will pop out at the same time. In other words, you have to be careful in darker grass. I'm heading towards Nacarine City. Gotta be careful, you say. I don't think it's anything that we wouldn't be able to handle. Uh, whoa, we got uh, a bunch of items through pickup. Got a repel that I'm not gonna use right now. Got a full heal. And got a potion. I haven't made up for that Ultra Ball that I squandered, but uh, let's check out the Dark Tall Grass. This is a new mechanic in that you will find higher leveled Pokemon than in typical Tall Grass, making it a decent training tool. And like Charon was saying, you can find two wild Pokemon at the same time. You do need to knock one out in order to catch one of them, however, so choose your attacks carefully, make sure you know what you want to catch before coming in, and hope that you don't run into two shinies and have to make the most difficult decision of your life. <laughs> I've seen it happen to many a soul, and I've seen it tear apart many of those many a souls. I'm gonna go ahead and take you down, and I, yeah, Blitzel doesn't have static for its ability, so I can hit it with a physical attack without really having to worry. It's always something that I think about. I don't think Shockwave would have targeted them both now that I'm thinking about it. I think I'm thinking of another move. Uh, should be fine though, ooh, okay. Uh, yeah, Shockwave. 
And Ottawa, you go ahead and give that a razor shell. And it didn't stand a chance. <laughs> You can see right there, Ottawa learned less experience, er, er, learned less experience, earned less experience than Blitzel did, just because of that whole experience rule that I was mentioning earlier. Uh, this is our first instance of a trainer who moves around. You can see that when I, or no, huh? Oh, okay. When I get close to her, she turns and moves when I'm running. Okay, that's how that works. I think I'm just gonna skip past her for right now. Got this over this way. Got a great ball. And I probably should actually be using my repels now that we're not having to see new things with encountering the Pokemon and actually put my money where my mouth is and saying, hey, I'm really happy that we can buy these now. Proceeds to not use them. It's best to use what you have learned in order to master it. Well, today I learned trainers can disguise themselves as normal walking NPCs and completely fake you out. I'll grow from that knowledge. I'm mastering the lesson in three dimensions by experiencing it like this. And uh, not on a Game Boy Advance because your game was released on a DS. I understand the basic logic of what you're saying and you are a very perceptive young child to be aware of what lies beyond the fourth wall. As we go past him though, we're in yet another gate building and my date is correct this time. I don't know why my date was four years off exactly to the day. I really don't know why that was happening. I should have bought more Pokeballs. A Pokemon I wanted to catch just came out and I missed it. Hi, I have some questions for you. If you were to play, uh, which do you prefer, outside or home? I actually like playing outside lately. I see, I see. Then which one are you interested in? The thing everybody knows or the thing that nobody knows? Let's be real, when it comes to common knowledge, I am so clueless and don't know anything. I'd say you're very curious. <laughs> yes, that's one way of putting it. And with that root behind us, at long last, welcome to, nah. <laughs> that's all that got out right there. Or maybe even Knack, I, don't, I only saw the first two letters. Come with me a sec. We know this place is called Knack Green City because Charon told us though, so it's not really all that accurate to do that. If you go straight from here, there's a Pokemon Center. Gee, I never would have guessed. And use these if you want. Chesto Berries, those instantly wake a Pokemon up from sleep. They are equipable, pretty nice. Oh, and a piece of advice. You rhymed with me. Uh, Knack Green City's gym leader uses normal types. If you have a fighting type Pokemon, it might give you a big advantage. That is the only super effective type on normal type. Uh, now, however, we have arrived in a new city. We got through that other route. We had a repel wear off as Nurse Joy was about to talk to us. Uh, sorry for stinking up your Pokemon Center a little bit. I think we've made a lot of progress and I guess with that, we're gonna end things off here. And next time on Pokemon Black and White, we're gonna explore Nacreen City and see what it has to offer. Just like the other cities that we've seen up to this point, there's quite a lot to see and do. See you guys then.